Part 1 of JPJC 2020 question that we are looking at here require us to sketch the graph of y is equal to fx which is given to us as x plus m square over x minus 1 where m is the value that is between 0 0.5 and 1 so for example if I were to let m be equal to 0 0.75 I can actually press it into the calculator and let my calculator show me the rough shape of the graph so I've gotten the shape and in this graph here we can see that there's going to be a vertical asymptote and looking at this expression here the vertical asymptote is x is equal to 1 it is the value of x that will cause the denominator here to be 0 henceforth it will cause y to be undefined so we have our vertical asymptote and there's going to be an oblique asymptote and for the oblique asymptote we can get inspiration from this x over here so for our oblique asymptote, we are going to label it as y is equal to x, which is going to be a straight line that passes through the origin. So now we have our asymptotes. We have the rough shape of the graph, which we're going to be filling it into our solution. So we have this. But in our solution, we will be lacking three key features. One is going to be the y-intercept. The other two are going to be the stationary points. So let's try to find them algebraically because our calculator definitely will not be able to give us these two these three coordinates since my expression consists of m and we have conveniently let m be equal to 0 0.75 in this in our calculator so let's first try to find the y intercept so for the y intercept that occurs when x is equal to 0 so when x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 plus m square over 0 minus 1 so this is minus m square which means that the y-intercept is going to have a coordinates of 0 and minus m square which is what I've indicated here as for the stationary points let's make use of dy dx so to find dy dx we are going to be differentiating this and maybe it is more convenient if I were to just try to re-express this as m square multiplied by x minus 1 to the power of minus 1 instead so let's differentiate this differentiating this differentiating x it is 1 then differentiating x minus 1 to the power of minus 1 we will have a minus m square then x minus 1 to the power of minus 2 which i can express it as 1 minus m over x minus 1 square and since we are looking at the stationary points, we will be letting dy dx be equal to 0. So letting dy dx be equal to 0, it will be 1 minus m over x minus 1 square is equal to 0. So m over x minus 1 square is going to be equal to 1. m over x minus 1, this is going to be plus or minus 1 which means that x minus 1 is going to be equal to m or x minus 1 is going to be equal to minus m so x is going to be equal to 1 plus m or x is going to be equal to 1 minus m which gives us the x coordinate of the two points that I've indicated here and if I were to substitute this value of x into the expression here to get the corresponding y coordinates this is going to be equal to 1 plus 2m this will be equal to 1 minus 2m which gives us the coordinates of the two stationary points and in part 2 of this question we have an equation to analyze this equation according to what that is required from the question it is supposed to have two distinct and positive roots and we are not going to be analyzing this equation independently we are going to find inspiration from the graph that we have sketched in part 1 which is the graph of y is equal to fx where fx has an expression that is x plus m square over x minus 1 this was given to us by the question so what we want to do next is to manipulate this equation so that one side of this equation can have this expression here appearing and to do that let me first try expanding this so this is this minus x minus kx plus m square plus k this is equal to zero and if i were to factorize this as a term i will have x x minus one can you see here in the denominator here we have an x minus one 
and I'm going to shift this term and this term over to the right hand side. So m square, shifting this over to the right hand side, we have a kx minus k, which I can also factorize. If I were to factorize out k, I will once again have this x minus 1. So we have a x, x minus 1 plus m square is equal to this. And now if I were to divide throughout by x minus 1, we will have here as x plus m square over x minus 1. And this is equal to k. So now on the left hand side here, we have the expression that represents fx, which means that the second graph that we are supposed to sketch is the graph of y is equal to k. So this is the graph that we're going to be sketching. k is a constant, so y is equal to k is going to be a horizontal line. And we can see if the horizontal line were to be here, then it is going to be cutting the graph at two points and the x coordinates of the two points will represent the solution to this and they are positive values. So as long as k, the line y is equal to k is going to be a line that is above, strictly above this minimum point, it is going to give us two distinct and positive roots for this equation. So from here, we know that k must be a value that is strictly bigger than the y coordinate of this. So k must be bigger than 1 plus 2m. Let's not forget about the lower part of the graph. Can the line y is equal to k be here? No, because if it is here, yes, it is going to give us two distinct roots, but one of the root is going to be negative, the other one is going to be positive. So this is not the kind of line that we are looking for. Should this line be here? just passing through the y-coordinate, the y-intercept. Should it be here? No, it shouldn't. Again, we are going to be expecting two intersections where one is at x is equal to 0, the other one is a positive x, which means that when y is equal to k, which is equal to minus m squared, it is going to give us two roots, but it is not going to give us two positive roots because one is 0, the other one is positive. So y is equal to k also cannot be the line that passes through the y intercept of the graph. So that would mean that y is equal to k must be above, okay, it is a little bit tiny, but it must be above the y coordinate of this, but strictly below the y coordinate of this, in order for there to be two positive and distinct roots as the x coordinate of the intersections. So from here, we know that k, y is equal to this line, y is equal to k. k must be bigger than, strictly bigger than minus m squared, and it must be less than the y coordinate of the maximum point. So it must be strictly less than 1 minus 2m. Therefore, from my graph, I know that my answer is the question asks for the set of values of k. So k will be real numbers such that k is supposed to be between this and this, so minus m square and 1 minus 2m, or k must be strictly bigger than 1 plus 2m. In part 3, fx will be undergoing three transformations. The first transformation, a, it is going to cause fx to be translated by one unit in the negative x direction. So, translation of one unit in the negative x direction means we are going to be replacing x by x plus 1. So we have a f x plus 1. And for the second transformation, it is going to be a stretching by a scale factor of 1 over 3 parallel to the x axis, which means that from this, x is going to be replaced by 3x in order for the scale factor to be one third parallel to the x axis. So we will have uh, f replacing x by 3x. So we have this plus 1. And the final transformation c, c says that it is going to be translated by one unit in the negative y direction. This is straightforward. So we will just have this plus 1 minus 1. And according to the question, this is equal to 3x plus 1 over 9x. And I have a slightly different strategy and it's going to work superbly well for this particular kind of question. 
So what we are going to do next is instead of trying to reverse the transformation, let's continue to transform forward. For example, what we are going to try do is to continue to transform this graph so that I can get back a fx on the left hand side. So what we are going to first do is maybe we can just shift plus minus 1 over to the right hand side. So this will give us a 3x plus 1 over 9x plus 1. Then I'm going to replace all the x by 1 third x. So it will be 3 replacing x here by 1 third x. So algebraically on the right hand side, I should also replace all the x by 1 third x. So I have this plus 1 over 9, 1 third x, then plus 1, which will then give us a f of x plus 1 is equal to, this is going to be equal to x plus 1 over 3x, then plus 1. So we have done one transformation. We are going to do another transformation by replacing x here by x minus 1. So f, replacing this x here by x minus 1, then plus 1. I'm going to replace this x here by x minus 1 plus 1 over 3, I will replace all the x by x minus 1, then plus 1. So now we have fx on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, x minus 1 plus 1, this is x plus 1 over 3 of x minus 1. And now we can compare this to the original fx. And can you see, m squared is just 1 over 3. Or I can also rewrite this as 1 over 3 divided by x minus 1. Now it is even easier for us to see, comparing these two expressions, we can see that m square is equal to 1 over 3. And since m is a number that is between 0 0.5 and 1, so m, if I were to square root it, it is going to be square root of 1 over 3, positive square root of 1 over 3 or 1 over square root of 3.